Yo, here we go. We're going to talk about uh, the Premier West Conference and the Premier Central Conference. Now you can see here, <clears throat> I have a much more colorful schematic, but even if you're listening on the podcast, you're going to be able to follow. So the plan is we're going to talk about two conferences within the Premier League, all right, per segment or per show, all right? Uh, and so we'll also talk about the Champion League conferences as well, okay? So just to avoid confusion, I'm going to call all of the conferences within that Premier League, all right, something like the Premier West, the Premier Central, and so on and so forth, and then the Champion West and the Champion Central. I'm going to go ahead and use this disclaimer right now. I got this idea from European soccer. That's not the only league that uses relegation. If someone wants to come at me with some type of copyright infringement or anything like that, be my guest. I am not trying to steal anyone's idea. I am borrowing an idea. I am not claiming that this is my own idea. I am simply using a model that I think is great and attempting to save major college football with it. So if anything, I'm giving credit. I am not pretending that this is my own idea. But here's the deal. This is being applied to American football. And so if this idea itself works, then guess what, man? I will go ahead and I'll just give a cut of whatever kind of money I get to whoever uh, came up with the idea in the first place. Cool. All right. So I still get rich and you get you get your royalties. All right. So the Premier League West, the Premier West, this is basically the old Pac-12 or the current Pac-12. It's old to me because I am the new age. The old Pac-12 is the Premier League West minus Cal. Now, here's where we get into the color coding. If you notice over here, okay, Cal has been relegated. I demoted them. I demoted them because they're not competitive. I also demoted them because they don't have a good history besides really under Jeff Tedford. Uh, and while they have put guys into the league that have been extremely productive, they really haven't done much since Sonny Dykes had Jared Goff. And even that, think about it. Sonny Dykes left Cal. He just left Cal because he was so miserable there. All right. But I'm not here to just rag on Cal. What I'm here is to show you their Premier West Conference, which is Arizona, Arizona State. You can see they're both in white, meaning they belong. They're not great, but they're not god awful okay the next is byu this is an upgrade would you rather have byu in a conference or cal that's a no-brainer byu recruits nationally byu's profile is much higher byu is trending up byu has established success under multiple coaches lavelle edwards bronco mendenhall kalani sataki BYU belongs. Now they're purple because they're a combination of two different things. They're a private school and they're also a school that is quote unquote, quote promoted. Now they've, they've been an, an independent competing at the independent level. And in modern day, they are actually set to join the big 12, but in Adam Olson's premier conferences league, they are in the premier West. Okay. Now, right below BYU, you have Colorado. Boy, 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 Colorado, you are lucky. You are lucky that you are in the Premier Conference West. There are two reasons why I put you there. One, Mike McIntyre had a senior-laden team about nine years ago, and you guys won 10 games. Two, Dion is there, and you guys are trending upward, and I'm intrigued about what you're going to do over the next two to three years. Dion is a very polarizing figure. We call him Dion. He wants to be called Coach Prime. If I met the man, I would say, hey, Coach Prime. I would shake his hand, and then I would refer to him as Dion Coach Prime. All right, Dion Sanders. Colorado is very fortunate to be in here. They're red. 
What red means is they are a danger team. Okay, they are in danger. They are on the alert list. And in all likelihood, if they can't get their act together, then they are going to be placed in one of the bottom tiers of the Premier League conferences. And eventually they're going to get demoted or relegated into the Champions League, which, hey, Colorado, maybe that's what you want to be. And that's OK. But I think by hiring Deion Sanders, you guys have made the statement, no, we're trying to make a big splash hire and we're counting on this guy to help us out. Next is Oregon with Dan Lanning. You would expect Oregon to be better on defense. They were better on offense last year than they were on defense. And as a result, Kenny Dillingham, their offensive coordinator, is now the new head football coach at Arizona State. Kenny Dillingham, you're the man. I wish you nothing but success, sir. And you've hired a really good staff so far. Keep doing your thing. Also, small shout out to my man, Brian Michalowski, who was recently named the inside linebackers coach at Oregon. Man, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and be petty because I can. And Brian, I love you, man. You got a raw deal at Colorado and you just kept it classy and went to Oregon State and look at you now. And what happened to those dudes that were at Colorado? Mm, yeah, I don't know either. But hey, man, it's my podcast. And I'm telling you something right now. Folks, Brian Michalowski can recruit. He's a really good coach. And sooner or later, that guy's going to be an FBS coordinator. And then he's going to be an FBS head coach. Keep them receipts. Brian, I'm ready to come be your tight ends coach whenever you want me to, big dog. Next, Oregon State. They've done really good things under Jonathan Smith. Trent Bray is an excellent defensive coordinator. Oregon State is very balanced, sneaky good even. They smashed Florida in their bowl game. And they have DJ Uyunglele transferring in from Clemson. I think he's going to resurrect his career at Oregon State. Watch out for Oregon State. I got Stanford. Now, Stanford's yellow. They're a private school. Okay, BYU is a private school, but they also got quote-unquote promoted. That's why they're purple. All right, Stanford is a private school. And honestly, I wanted, I probably could make them an orange school uh, where they're in danger and they're a private school. Uh, man, if they hadn't hired a new coach, I probably would have put them at orange. Now, Stanford under uh, Jim Harbaugh really rose up and became great. And then under David Shaw, they continued that greatness. But over the years, it was just like they eroded because they refused as an administration to adapt and evolve to the ever-changing landscape in college football. And as a result, they were behind the eight ball when it came to name, image, and likeness, as well as recruiting. And especially the early enrollees, the spring enrollees, it's been very difficult for Stanford. Additionally, it's really hard for them to keep guys after their four years there because you can't just get into grad school at Stanford simply because you got your undergrad degree there. You have to be a scholar baller to get into grad school over there. And you say, well, Adam, anyone who goes to Stanford is a scholar. Yeah, but grad school is a whole different can of worms, man. It just is. So Stanford, you could be an orange team where you're on the brink of being danger. Okay, but I didn't put you there. UCLA, Chip Kelly. Let's see what they do post Dorian Thompson Robinson. I know they're going to have a quarterback battle going into the fall. I'm real interested to see how that works out. They've been trending up, but they've also had some real question mark head scratcher losses. So we'd love to see UCLA be more consistent, but they definitely belong. USC is a private school. Okay. And USC has the returning Heisman Trophy winner. They have Lincoln Riley who can develop uh, quarterbacks and call offenses like no other. Okay. And Alex Grinch at defensive coordinator. Alex Grinch can get it done, but the man needs more time. And I'm telling you, he's a really good defensive coordinator. The numbers just haven't shown it. Okay. You got Utah. Thank goodness for Utah because Utah, Utah is the kid in high school that was kind of shy and kind of weird, but he was an okay guy. And now all of a sudden Utah is rich and good looking and you're like, whoa, man, I didn't see that coming. That's Utah. Utah, uh, you are the uh, reigning Pac-12 champs. You beat USC twice. OK, you had that kind of weird loss at the beginning of the season last year to Florida, but Utah is always solid. 
Utah puts out a really good product. Andy Ludwig, their offensive coordinator, uh, got courted by Notre Dame and decided to stay at Utah for whatever reason. Their defensive coordinator, Morgan Scally, got into some hot water a couple of years ago for some texts that he sent. Uh, but those are two really good coordinators. Uh, and Kyle Whittingham uh, still looks like he could bench press about 400 pounds. And he's been their head coach there basically since Urban Meyer left Utah. Kyle Whittingham has been the head football coach at Utah. I repeat, Kyle Whittingham has been the head football coach at Utah since Urban Meyer left Utah. Think about that. Okay, you got Washington. Kalen DeBoer, awesome job in year one. Let's see if you can continue to rise. And then you got Washington State. That's kind of the wild card. So again, the Premier West, Arizona, Arizona State, BYU, Colorado, Oregon, Oregon State, Stanford, UCLA, USC, Utah, Washington, and Washington State. That is your premier West Conference.